jopa täällä Helsingissä Tomi Robinsonin kanssa kehittyväinen ääri So uh, our main newspaper in the city has called you the leader, the British leader of uh, the far right. So do you consider yourself to be far right? Uh, no, not at all. So in fact, if you think I do, the, the real far right is surprising. I'm known as a Zionist race trading shill to the real far right. So essentially, in Britain, and with me, uh, if you talk openly and honestly about Islam, or you criticise in any way any migration that goes against the globalist agenda, you're labelled far right. We, you should know. I presume you've been labelled far right. Uh, yeah, we, we have been. Um, you, you told me before that you went to Denmark, uh, but have you? Is this your first trip to Finland? This is my first trip to Finland. I, well, I went last year to Lapland, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, I took my children, and yeah, this is my first time to. Yesterday we had a press conference for a documentary and you didn't show up. So no. what's, uh, I, I've heard many versions of the story. You, oh, you, you, you heard you, yourself? No, I've had, so I had three injections before I come because I'm going to the Caribbean. And, um, and the only thing I could say was the allergic reaction to that because I literally, I must have lost about a stone yesterday. Essentially, but what? Because the reason, the reason for um, coming to Finland was to bring awareness to this documentary, which essentially is being censored. Mm. You watched the documentary yesterday? Uh, yeah, we must. There's nothing controversial in it. Mm. Nothing of hate in it. So already now, if you look at that, your mainstream broadcasters are already censoring any moderate not be spoken about. Yeah. The was bought, it was a documentary bought by the Finnish BBC. And, uh, the funny thing is that yesterday in the press conference there was another ma mainstream, uh, the, the same paper that called you the far right uh, was written. Uh, even that journalist was like, there's nothing, there's nothing controversial in this documentary. So they, even now they are. It's good. Yeah. So, so it's good. And essentially, the good thing is, which I spoke to you, if I had come there yesterday. Um, everything would have been about, I believe, about me, rather than about the documentary. And the way it's played is exactly how it should have played, was that everyone's talking about the documentary that they've watched, it doesn't, there's no pressure on them to have to stand against the documentary because of, they want to label me as far right, or the journalists can't speak freely, um, or they feel pressured to, so I think that all in all it's absolutely played its part. We wanted the reason why I came, and why my name was put there. Yeah, the documentary was uh, it started in 2015, and uh, now the public uh, network, the, the Finnish BBC, says that yeah, but the, it doesn't follow the scenario that we bought. So uh, it's it's public. It doesn't show what we wanted it to show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't show the beautiful nest of multiculturalism vipers that we were had intent. Yeah, it's funny because they. In, in, in Britain, you have the li TV license thing. Mm -hmm. We used to have that, but nowadays uh, it's uh, mandatory. It, they, they take it on your tax uh, report. They, they, even us, we have to. We, we get a few super chats we need to pay for the. Uh, yeah, we don't. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, That's, uh, yeah. I don't know if you just saw our panel film. Uh, I, I haven't watched it yet. I, I'm aware of it. But so in that, at the end, I end that documentary on telling people how to not pay for the TV license. So to me, you don't need to. And that's why you got banned from Facebook. Instantly, yeah. Because it was going viral. Probably they were getting thousands of people called them up and cancelled. Um, essentially, we're being forced to pay for propaganda that's used against our people. We're being forced. Yeah, the Finnish media <coughs> keeps saying that you got banned from Facebook and Instagram because you incited violence and right. hatred. Uh, did you get any specifics from uh, Facebook or Instagram on why you were getting banned? Which posts were against the community guidelines? No, I didn't hear anything. And then essentially, they're lying. We all know they're lying. If I would have said anything that incited violence towards anybody, I'd have been arrested. Just probably like in Finland, we have strict laws on incitement, you know, hatred, racial hatred, all of these crimes. I haven't broke any of those laws. What they're calling hate is in fact truth. And because I'm not breaking any laws, not committing any crimes, they can't stop me that way. 
they just, I think they've seen the rise of my popularity with the public that they are trying to work out ways stopping it. And prison was one way that didn't work, completely nearly backfired on them. Um, then now with Panorama, they were going to run a documentary about me that would have crucified me in the public uh, with lies and smears. And because I exposed that, then I think they've just said get rid of me. Yeah, it's funny, our mainstream news uh, networks, uh, they use, uh, they just say that the Guardian claims that. Yeah, that's and, it, of course. And, they, they and the Guardian take their, their lies and their, their quotes from groups like Hope Not Hate, and I cover in my documentary. These groups are funded by George Soros, and they operate 24 hours a day uh, to defame and slander and attack us. And then when the, they work hand in hand. So when the media run the article, they then run the article quoting Hope Not Hate or these far-left groups who call you Nazis, who call you this, that you're accused to be in far right. Yeah, fuck you, people like you. Yeah, we have also been smeared by Hope Not Hate, and uh, last year they tried to shut down one of our conferences, and uh, it was funny because the conference was in Estonia, and Hope Not Hate called the place where we uh, were having the conference, and the place just said, oh, thank you for the information. Yeah, that's it. Because that's the difference when you go to Estonia or you go to Hungary or you go to Poland. None of those countries are yet infected. Um, they will be, unless their leaders don't like them. So essentially, there's not many here. That's the why we need to really form resistance to it and educate the public of the dangers before the problem's so bad that everyone's too scared to say anything. Yeah, the, the guy uh, before us was from uh, the Hungarian mainstream media. Uh, do you? Have you ever been on the Hungary? I've never had no. But oh, do you know it's something different? Oh, completely. It's a it is a completely different than any other journalist I've sat down. Yeah, it's old school journalism like it used to be. He asks you a question, you answer it. Yeah. Without smears and attacks. Without keywords and and buzzwords in order to just ruin it. Yeah. Uh, about uh, hate speech laws, we have been uh, suspected of hate speech. One of uh, our crimes was to basically troll a leftist demonstration. We had the placards, uh, I said, learn to swim, and she had a, one saying, uh, Escania hits you once. It's what? The, the truck, Escania truck, uh, okay. hits you only once, but the skulls of racism last forever. And the police <coughs> investigated this for two years. And uh, they arrested uh, Yeah, I was in jail. And I've been in jail also for uh, reporting on the street, like you, Reaching of the peace, they call it. I've been a few days in jail. Not, not as long as you, but uh, we have lots of things in, in common. Yeah, in our hometown in Oulu, which is uh, four or five hundred miles from here, up north, um, um, I I published some names. I've been doing this for years. I, I just published the names of because the the, um, the mainstream media here they just say a man was arrested. Yeah, he, he, charged. Yeah, he. A man. Yeah. If, if, you, if you see in the UK street a man or a youth yeah. in the report, it's a model. Yeah. Because if it was a, it would, it would say a fat, a, a overweight white bald man wearing this, that if he's white, he's getting described every minute of him. Um, but yeah, it's the same in our reports. But I, I, I have heard about the, the rapes and the grooming in your city. Yeah. I said I'd like to visit there myself. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. It's, it's funny because even that you even the, 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 you you didn't show up yesterday. There was a frenzy. We, we have also the hope not hate the Finnish version in, in here. It's called the crowd network. That's the, <coughs> the verb. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're, 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 yeah. If you have any tips on where the, the new location, because they, they cancelled the first location uh, yeah, and uh, we got a, another one. And even, it was even then when they cancel locations like that. It, um, it actually benefits, yeah. like uh, to a point, because it brings the the main point of that documentary yesterday was to get people talking about it. By cancelling the location, it caused a stir. By my name being there, it caused more of a stir. So essentially, the more speech you can have on any of these issues, the more people are free to speak about them, the more people feel open about them. And then, yeah, the document maker said that uh, had you not been invited, nobody would have talked about this. And it just would have been censored. And no, the, the, the Finnish public would not be aware that they were not being shown what's happening. They wouldn't have no idea. So uh, I said to him, yeah, what he has to do now is, is plan to where he's going to broadcast that. If he can't, then broadcast.
starts to bounce towards a huge screen and invite thousands to come out. And then those thousands can essentially, we might have been removed off social media, but citizen journalists like yourself are so important. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, currently, since <coughs> it's still, it still kind of belongs to the public, public TV, we are not allowed to broadcast in, in public, but we can organize private sessions. And there are talks about this that we will be uh, broadcasting it for people that, and, and we will talk about it all the time. The documentary is, is really uh, very neutral. It's not, uh, it's not, there's nothing special. The only thing I think that is, uh, it is censored is that it's, it can wake up some people that have been uh, brainwashed by the, they, they will see that, yeah, well, yeah, that's the way it is. That there are encompassing in these migrants that are coming in are some terrorists. And until you can say who is and who isn't, you should not be bringing them into your country. And then their plans, they were talking, I believe, planning to rape girls. And then you've seen the rape rates skyrocket. You've had your first taste of terrorism. You, you know that even before the migrant crisis, we had uh, a 17, the, the the foreigners had the foreigners from uh, the Middle East and North Africa. They rate at a rate of 17 compared to the native population, and that was during the years when uh, we had three, four thousand every year. In 2015, the so-called migrant crisis, we had 32,000 uh, Iraqis and uh, such that uh, entered the country. But we have had some ISIS uh, cases here. Uh, there was one terrorist attack. Nearby. And there were and two where they tried to ram a bus. Did he? They tried yeah. to. Yeah. But they said it wasn't terrorism, just like in just like in England where we got told it's mental health. Two people at the same time tried to take control of the buses. Yeah. Yeah, but the passengers saved the passengers situation. Saved. Uh, and also we have had some guys that have been trialed because we have proof that they were uh, doing ISIS stuff uh, in, in Iraq. And uh, two, two were acquitted because they were twins. So the court here, the yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. But then even by trying, that's the point, even by putting them in prison, so in the UK, when you put them in prison, it, the problem grows because they just convert more people. They have such control in our prison system in Britain. Our prison systems are like ISIS training camps. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the way uh, in France, in Belgium, in many places. Here in Finland, we have uh, a big population. And we also have noticed that, that even the mainstream media has uh, said that they have noticed uh, that the rise of uh, Islam in, in uh, the prisons and all of that. But, uh, that's, not, that's not a mistake. You know the growing place of Islam when they've obviously started spreading through the prisons, even in America, everywhere. That's not been done without care for thought and planning. Because even if you look at Muhammad, when Muhammad went out to the, he, the people he converted, first of all, to his thinking, were the criminals, were the thugs. And in prison you've got the weakest people, the most vulnerable people, people who have been wronged their whole life by society, many never been given a chance. And then they take all that anger and frustration and they give it a cause. And they welcome them into their brotherhood. And it's a powerful formula to mix. And then we have 800 a year, 800 hardened thugs and criminals. And you've got the toughest men in the towns then converting to Islam. So then it's all, when you go back to the town where they're from, they didn't have a foothold. Islam is in the streets, it's in the gangs. All the, all the gangs now in, in towns like Birmingham, cities like Birmingham in England, the gangs of the young black men, the Afro-Caribbean gangs, or the drug gangs, they're all now Muslim from the prisons. None of them are born Muslim, but when they've, some of them are converted, then slowly they've all converted. And then they happen, really, whoever controls the streets controls the town. Um, so you'll see the crime will be taken over by the Muslim migrants crime, the drugs, the prostitution, all of these things are being controlled. Yeah, it's, uh, it's lucky that Finland is not yet at that point. Well, even if you look at Sweden, it's, uh, Sweden is very terrible compared to us. Because the bombings there. Yeah, we, we op Finland opened its border in 1990 when the Soviet Union collapsed. We got some Somalis from uh, the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. the elite Somalis that came from the Moscow University. 2000, uh, Somalis entered the country illegally then, back then, and that's when, when the asylum system started in Finland, the asylum industry. 
And uh, it? it's crazy that the wall um, the Soviet Union, like in Germany, was actually protected. <laughs> actually protected their country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like East Germany. You look here and think, well, it's so much better than West Germany because they have the wall. Yeah, if you look at like uh, Chemnitz, you, you are aware of uh, the city of Chemnitz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have big uh, demonstrations. Yeah, they have been there. So, yeah, so yeah, in, <coughs> in Eastern Europe, you don't see a lot of these problems that we have because uh, the, the communism has uh, sort of vaccinated them against these ideas. Uh, so they are not as uh, gullible for them as we are. But what, what would you say to these people? Because there are a lot of people in Finland who say that. Okay, we can do this decently. We can take in all these migrants without it turning ugly like it has turned everywhere else. What would you say to these people? You can't. Um, it's the same Islam. So it's the same Islam that's causing the problems in Sweden and Britain and France and all of these problems. And it's the same Islam in Afghanistan. It's not like all of a sudden they're going to come into your country and Islam's going to change. So long as they're being indoctrinated through Islam, so long as they have mosques, funded by Saudi and countries like this. It's the same intolerance, it's the same separatism, it's the same non-integration, it's the same, they believe that they are superior, they're being taught that they're superior, that their way of life and their thinking is superior, that you are not of a group, not equal, um, they're not equal women. Uh, for the last 90 seconds you've been without so any sound. No sound is going online. Okay. Uh, so, <coughs> We're in Finland, people. We're in, and it's snowy and beautiful outside. And it's a beautiful country that's not yet affected in the same way as ours. And we're sort of giving a warning shot, where in 2015 they made a documentary. They followed a migrant who came into the country. They followed a father of a young girl who lived next to the migrant. They followed all these different people. And then they told the story over a few years. And what you find is this young migrant who comes across very, you'll like him. People will like him as he comes across. He tells the story that in his migrant camp, where these refugees are, that there are jihadis, that there are fighters that the young Muslim men are talking about going and raping young Finnish girls. And then over the two years from 2015, the rape rate went like this, of course, in Finland. Finland experiences first terrorist attacks. All of these things tell the story. Now, the Finnish broadcaster, state broadcaster, like the BBC, that's who's due to air this documentary. And when they saw the news and saw what they got from the documentary, they pulled it. Because, of course, we can't have the public being aware of any of these problems, because they just want everyone to think that Islam is great and migrants are great. So they pulled it, and the idea to censor it, and the gentleman who made the documentary invited me to come yesterday because he saw it just being censored, but then he set up a theatre and they cancelled that. Mm -hmm. But then because all the press come for a frenzy, because that, that I, I'm the big far-right bad guys here, um, the whole country now and the mainstream media are talking about this documentary that's been censored and why it's been censored. And yeah, that's what we're doing here. And these two are citizen journalists, who are doing exactly what we do. They're going against the mainstream media in England, uh, in Finland. They're obviously called far right. They've been arrested, of course. Um, <laughs> has anyone been beaten up yet? Uh, no, but I, I had a bike lock attack. You had a bike lock, what, they keep your bike lock? Uh, not me, but my, uh, my camera. Oh, they smashed the camera. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. And do you know what? So they're from a city in the, um, I don't know if it's north of, it's 500 miles from here. No, yeah. Oh, look, I, I keep trying to say it. Oh, look. <laughs> I know. So, and in this city, this gentleman exposed um, the grooming scandal. So remember, they haven't had migrants here for long, two years. And how, how, how have those migrants said thank you and repaid the Finnish people? By raping up to 30 children, which I believe. Um, and the migrants who have done it have been Syrian, Ar Eritrean, Iraqi. Um, so in a small country like this, a five and a half million population with less than 100,000 migrants, the grooming is exactly the same. The same culprits, the same tactics. They pick them up at the shops, they treat them to money and alcohol, and then they gang rape them. Same problems, same people, same fun. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. Um, and we're actually in a prison. This is an old prison. And 
I think on the room it says <laughs> it's all the cells of rooms. It's nuts. Yeah, but um, yeah, <coughs> people are all upset to say that uh, there was no sound problem. I, I don't know. Um, there was no problem. Yes, yeah, yeah, this is um, uh, But they said that for twenty years in our country as well. No, but uh, I mean. Oh, no, sound problem. Yeah, okay. okay. No. <coughs> uh, but yes, uh, I'm not used to speaking English, so it's. it's I, I You're doing a pretty good job, mate. Do you want me to speak Finnish? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, Yeah, so uh, what uh, I would like uh, our Finnish people, people to hear because uh, they most likely haven't heard all about the, how the grooming gang cases uh, started to uncover in the UK <coughs> and your hometown Luton uh, was in a major role in that. Uh, so would you like to like, so, give us a short version of how things went there? So growing up in Luton, so I, well, I had a cousin who was groomed abused, raped, she woke up once with loads of bearded men when she was a child. Um, she was found naked running through the streets by prostitutes. The prostitutes called her dad. And uh, she was hooked on, hooked on drugs then that they'd been given to her, that they'd manipulated her, that they'd got her onto. And the police did nothing. And it became apparent when we started the English Defence League that people were talking to across the whole of the country are suffering these same problems and the police are doing nothing. Now the grooming, they call it grooming, it sounds like something wonderful you do. Like, you groom a dog, this is rape jihad. This is gangs of Muslim men specifically targeting non-Muslim children. And if we look at the Rob, we, we spoke about this for years and we warned about it. And when the Robin report came out, it's sort of like people sat back and thought, hold on, they're telling the truth. All the horrific horror stories that we were saying were happening and the police were allowing to happen, no one believed. Because people expect the police to do their job, they expect them to, no one wants to believe we live in a corrupt society where the police will stand by and allow children to be raped. No one wants to believe that. Yeah, I, I get the sensation that uh, the police, they are actually our enemies. Because I've never met any friendly police officer. Yeah. They always treat me as, the, they are friends with the Antifa, but, but with us they are very, very uh, violent. Mm -hmm. In our country, the hierarchy, the hierarchy are, are like that. But the, the, officers on the, the officers on the street are very supportive of us. But with the rapes, so in the town of Rotherham, so you understand the scale of the problem, Rotherham is about 3% Muslim. That's it, 3%. Um, there are 10,000 Muslim men in Rotherham. There are 2,800 that fit the criteria of the age of men that could be involved in these rapes. That is aged 16 to 60, no? 2,800. Uh, that 2,800, 500, over 500 are under investigation currently for child rape. That's 20% of the Muslim men in that population are already under investigation. 20%. Now, in the population of 3% Muslim, we have seen 1,400 children of the conservative guesstimate, so a lot more, that have been raped. In another city called Telford, there's 1% of Telford is Muslim. In that city, there's 1,000 children that have been raped by these gangs. Now, when I come from Luton, where 35% of the town is Muslim. What do you think it's like there? Yeah. Now, and when it gets to a certain level where the infiltration of government, of police, of everything, the Muslims are, are everywhere, then um, I don't think you'll ever get the true, truly told what's happening in those towns, because they're so big, they keep it down. Now, in these, I think these two cities in England have been used as scapegoat cities, because they've been trying out for ages to get a... Um, a public inquiry into another, other cities where there's large percentages and they keep getting refused. The only time, only time they've done a big public inquiry was in a city where there's hardly anything. Look what we found. So yeah, essentially, these problems will, and as, as I just said to those people there, these problems will infest everywhere that they are. Uh, I got elected in our city council a few years ago and uh, last year they were talking about the integration program of our city and uh, they they actually send these migrants, or these asylum seekers, to uh, kindergartens and the schools in our hometown. And uh, I was... That's an integration program. I, to meet the local people. Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it, they send the yeah. migrants from Syria or Afghanistan or Iraq exactly. to meet your children. Yeah, and you can, <laughs> you, can, you, can, you, can, you can see the pictures on Facebook, they are hugging the, the very young girls. Oh, for God's sake! And, and one, 
Oh, it's not funny, but bloody hell. Yeah. What? 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 Yes. I know, it's not funny. Here's but... Mohammed, who four weeks ago was running around machine gunning, fighting with ISIS. Yeah. Well, and here he is now, and here's your kid. One year ago, I, I held a speech during that uh, integration program uh, thing, and uh, I, asked, I asked them, are you crazy? What, what are you thinking? But nobody listened to me. And we have also one police officer that is, has been elected in the city council, and he was like, it's the best thing that ever happened. Uh, this two, they call it two-way integration. Yeah, two-way. Their way and your kids go there. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and still, <coughs> now, uh, after these uh, grooming gang rapes that were discovered in our city, they organized in uh, January, they organized a, uh, a security information uh, thing. And I went there. Uh, and I, I, my, my speech was uh, that I started my speech with, I just came from Helsinki, so this city, and in the train, one guy told me that if these migrants rape my daughter, I will kill them, I will not call the police. And I said this in front of the police that was sitting in our city council, in front of the, the, everybody, and I said, I urge everybody to do the same, because uh, the police will not help you. Uh, and now they they, they are no, no, they, is that, you said <laughs> they, they are investigating my speech. <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because uh, in February they ended one investigation. They started on, another. Yeah. And, and the next day I was interrogated about another incitement. Or, to be honest, is, is it incitement or, or if you're saying? Essentially, if someone rape my daughter, yeah, I can, yeah. I can. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so I don't understand how men haven't. Yeah, well, one yeah. of one of the the victims in our town uh, committed suicide. She was fourteen, and uh, the parents they are angry at me because uh, people could connect the her rape name with because, her. because so they even knew it was her that were raped. Yeah, yeah. and the. Parents, they are angry at me. I told them, hey, I haven't raped your daughter. Oh so it's still, but you can still have parents that are so brainwashed that they are angry at us. And not, I, not, I, at not, the, not the Muslim. Well, not the politicians that invited yeah, the Muslim. The, mm -hmm. the, I, I would be angry at the politicians. Who brought him here? Yeah. Who brought this man from Syria to rape my daughter? Who brought this man here? That's oh, right. man. So uh, I'd like to, I said I'd like to come to your city. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Man. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, thank you so much for your time, Hamid. This has been very fun. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. With the serious yeah, topics we have been discussing. Yeah, so if you're in Helsinki, you will be able to meet uh, Tommy late at around 7 p.m. local time. We are going to a, a place that will be published uh, afterwards. Eli, jos olette Helsingissä, niin voitte tulla tapaamaan. Anyone in Helsinki? Kello 7. Tai jos seitsemän maista tai. Sinne päin. Tiina laittaa Twitteriin ja Facebookiin. Me, me ilmoitetaan siellä. Ja, tota, tämä oli ihan hyvä lähetys ja tämä oli mielenkiintoinen tapahtuma. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, um, we are, we've sat here since 11 o'clock doing interview after interview. Not an interview. And the Hungarian one was the best because all you see them, because that was the, they're mainstream. Hungarian mainstream TV, but completely, you can just see on site and fully get it. and not corrupt. In any way, the, the channel is M1 in Hungary. They've got saunas everywhere. They've got saunas in their pubs, bro. They've got saunas in their pubs. I went in the pub yesterday, I went into the toilet, I come out, there's two men standing naked in the sauna. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on, lads? What is going on? Just come and get a beer. Even in the flats, like every house has got a sauna. Every single house. Mental. Good night.